Hello YouTube, it's me John Avenger once again and welcome back to another review. This is of a TV, a miniseries, animated miniseries that came out last week on Disney+. Plus. We finally got a new Star Wars show after months of nothing pretty much because, you know, Re uh, The Bad Batch ended a few months ago. The Acolyte was a massive failure, but this one is a much better film. This is the much better version of what we should have gotten with the sequel trilogy and with The Acolyte. It's, um... Written and executive produced by Dan Hernandez and Benji Summit and with Chris Buckley serving as director. Yeah, no Kathleen Kennedy here, so they actually told a story. The series followed Sig Griebling, who accidentally activates a powerful Jedi relic that rewrites reality, forcing him to restore things to normal. Basically, what if, like from the, and Marvel's What If, if they if they reversed the you know the events from Star Wars and the Empire won. And they were taking over the galaxy, and, and the rebels didn't exist. And that is Lego Star Wars rebuild the galaxy. This is awesome. Not the best Star Wars show of all time. I mean, the, the Mandalorian is still their best show, at least the first two seasons. But this was really solid. Because unlike you know what failed about the new trilogy and the and the and the two uh, so solo spinoff movies and the other shows that came out. They didn't focus on story. They focused on fan service, preaching, feminism, gay woke shit, and things that we didn't need. Just saying, guys. This was short. It was four episodes long, 20-something minutes, not an hour and a half. Not a lot of British accents, which is a huge plus for me after all I've been through this year. And the cast is really good here. You got Gaten Matarazzo, the guy from Stranger Things, as the main character, Sig. You have... Tony Revolori, yes, Flash Thompson from the Spider-Man movies with Tom Holland as his brother, Dev. You have Bobby Mon Monaghan as Jedi Bob. Yeah, he's a different Jedi than Obi-Wan. He's not ripping off Obi-Wan. You got Marseille Martin, and she's good here. Unlike that Good Times Crappy Fest from on Netflix, this is a good script for her. And she's a black character that they don't dwell on. They don't make her a stereotype. They don't make her useless. She's badass, cute, and she gets the job done. They don't sexualize her because it's a Lego. Well, what can you do? Michael Cusack as the robot, I didn't care for his voice. He has an accent. He's Servo, the, the droid, uh, gonk droid that follows Sig throughout the story. And I'm like, eh. I'm at best does play a, a, a funny version of Jar Jar. You have Darth Jar Jar. It was a fan theory that people had that they put on the big screen. And there's a lot of dialogue in this that makes fun of how stupid the sequel trilogy was. And there was literally a line that Dev said in the fourth episode. I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil it. That's the only thing I'm spoiling. I'm not spoiling the ending. It's an Easter egg, and you'll like it if you loved the Mandalorian. I'm not gonna say anything else. He said, "I bought you when you were nothing, and you're still nothing." Exactly. Thank you, Dev. Thank you. The hobo. They have the dark version of the hobo they were gonna use in the sequel trilogy in the last movie, and they copped out and they let. Nah, let's just make her the the hero that has all the powers in the world. Here, these characters are flawed. They're not superheroes. And Dark Hobo still sucks. You guys know me. If you've seen my YouTube channel for the past 10 years, near, near 10 years in, uh, in next year, you know that I was not a fan of the Hobo, no matter what version, light or dark. I hate that character. I don't like the actress that played her. This is not DR's voice. This is another vo voice actress that voices her, but she didn't need to be there. She's just there because they didn't have a dark version of Leia, and they didn't want to disrespect Carrie Fisher's, you know premature death so uh mark hamill comes back as luke and he's not freaking old and useless he's he, he's actually a surfer that uses his dad's pod racer you know in the other uh in alternate universe timeline of star wars that he's a he was a pod racer instead of a you know a racer on tatooine and it's an interesting premise this is what the freaking sequel trilogy should have done what if the villains took over in the beginning and then they have to rebuild the galaxy. That would have been a better plot than remaking A New Hope, remaking Return of the Jedi and Empire Strikes Back, and doing it ass backwards, and putting feminism up your up your ass. That wasn't needed. Nobody was asking for that. And I'm not a toxic Star Wars fan. I've stuck with this series even through the bad times, through the good times and the bad times. I sat through the special editions. I've sat through the prequels, and I enjoyed them, despite their flaws. I sat through the Clone Wars cartoon. I sat through the sequel trilogy. I sat through Solo and Rogue One, and Book of Boba Fett and all that. I've sat through it all, guys. Nearly everything. Andor didn't even bother, or Acolyte, because I knew they were going to suck. Everybody said, uh, uh, you know, Andor was good. I, I don't like the actor. Here, the premise was interesting. After finding an ancient relic that rewrites reality at will, a boy named Sid Greenlake, 
Griebling seeks out the solution to the changes with the help of the elusive Jedi long forgotten. And the cast sells it. They're not preaching agendas here. They're doing it well. Yeah. Jedi Bob is B Barbarian Awful. Marseille Martin is J Jesse Scala. She's a cool character. Has an afro. Really good, well done stuff. You, of course, have some of the alumni that are still alive from Star Wars. You got Anthony Daniels as C-3PO. You got um, Matt Sloan as the voice of Darth Vader. Uh, again, rest in peace, uh, James Earl Jones. You got Kelly Marie Tran as Darth Rose. Who? They, yeah, they probably would have made Rose of Evil. That would have made her less useless than giving her five minutes of screen time in the last movie. Just saying. You have uh, the Darth Maul is here. Well, he's not a Darth here. He's just Maul. You have General Grievous. And, well, uh, Billy D. Williams, but I'm not going to tell you what, who he plays. You got uh, Piert Michael as Yoda because, you know, Frank Oz was too busy. And uh, other people. And, and they did a great job. It got good reviews from critics. Fans like it. It's not garbage. It's short. It doesn't have the preachy, the power of one, the thread. There is no thread. It's the force. There is no thread. You failed, Acolyte. This was a massive hit. This, this was one of the best shows I've seen this year after... And after the long hiatus after X-Men 97, I needed another cartoon not to suck. And this was the, definitely the, 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 the freaking show that I was looking for. This is the droids I'm looking for. This is the show I was looking for. It's short and sweet and to the freaking point. And likable characters, and they are telling a story. Telling a ambitious, intriguing, freaking engaging story. The animation's good. The soundtrack is freaking awesome. The the the, the you know the, uh, the the action sequences. If you've seen any Lego property, Star Wars, um, Marvel, DC, Harry Potter, freaking uh, you know uh, Lord of the Rings, whatever. If you played those games or watched those uh, Lego shorts or movies, they're good because they give you what you want. Lego Batman was phenomenal. Love it. The first Lego movie, good movie. I don't think it's the best anymore, but. The second Lego movie sucked, but again, that was because they tried to do too much. Here, they do enough. And there's little, little bits of fan service, but it doesn't stop the show to say, hey, look, there's the Cantina. Lo, look, there's the Death Star. There, look, there's Ewoks. Look, look, there's the Millennium Falcon. They take ideas that were taken from Star Wars, they turn it on its head, and they say, fuck you, to the sequel trilogy. Which is a nice nod for me, because Dev is basically Kylo Ren, but with a more intriguing backstory, and he has a brother. Again, there you go. You have uh, someone he's related to he can relate to. And he's not throwing a hissy fit every five minutes like Kylo Ren. His name is Darth Devastator. Again, that's cool. That's a cool name. If more Star Wars was like this, less people would be toxic and less people would be divisive on it. You can make something good, guys. X-Men, it took a long time to get a, a, a sequel to the original 1992 cartoon. And to get Wolverine that yellow outfit on the big screen. We waited 24 years. This we only waited, like what, like 8 months or 9 months? 3 months after the Acolyte? I, I wish this came out earlier. Because this would have been easily been one of the best animated shows of this year. Right next to X-Men 97. I like it better than Ninja Turtles. It's less kitty. Um, It's a little bit better than Batman Cape Crusader. That was more adult, more than for kids. But... I like that, but this one I think is one of the best, at least in the top three shows I've seen this year. Because I love Star Wars, and when they turn it on its head and do something different that doesn't insult people or ruin the canon, this is the kind of stuff that I'm into. Yeah. And if you don't believe me, see the show for yourself. It's worth a watch. It's four episodes long, 20-something minutes, none of this preachy garbage. It's got the diversity checklist, but it's not forcing in your face. And again, there's some weaknesses. The Dark Hobo, fuck that character. I hate that character. Uh, some of the ideas work, and some of them are like, you know, we've seen it already. The the uh, Cornerstone is basically a Kyber brick from the video game. But it didn't bother me. At least it was something different. It wasn't another Plants of the Death Star. It wasn't another Plants of the Star Killer. It wasn't the map or whatever. No, it's something different. And I like different. I like things to do be, to go in a new direction that's not treading old ground. We don't have to do the same things. I love the original trilogy with a passion. You guys know that. It'll never die. The originals are going to live forever. The prequels are underrated. The sequel trilogy, I couldn't get into them because they were too preachy, too long, and they retreaded the same things. And you have the worst actress of all time in Star Wars. So, yeah, this is what I'd rather see. I'd rather see ten more of these shows than any more Acolytes 
or Andor's or any of the sequel trilogy garbage you gave us. Just saying, guys, do put effort. When you have effort, you get this. A 7.5 on IMDb. What did the Acolyte get? Let's see. Because I, I hate to beat a dead horse, but I'm like, that's why Josh didn't see it. Because like, oh, I don't, want, I don't want the fans to attack me. It's garbage. I already knew that from the diverse casting. 4.1. 4.1. This got a 7.5. Trust me. No. I don't want a software update. Anyway, it, that's my review, my short review on the uh, Lego Star Wars, the Rebuild the Galaxy. See it for yourself and, and give your own opinion. Does, you know, you don't have to take my word for it. Just don't see any more of this garbage that they've been spewing out like the Acolyte. Because I'm like, that's an abomination. That show would have sucked if it came out right after The Mandalorian. This show came out just in time. And it made me laugh. I smiled. I was like, thank you. You're speaking my language. My Star Wars language is not... There's a black person for no reason. There's a British chick. There's a people with superpowers. There's a bunch of gay women. I don't give a shit about that. I care about the space travel and the battles and the character development and the jokes that actually freaking work. Not topical humor. That's for Marvel. That's not for you. Just saying, guys. I know I said this a lot, but this is the kind of show that I wish Star Wars would go back to. Give it to people that care about the property. Not these greedy bastards that just want your money and your time. Don't give them your money and your time. Disney has enough money. They got $2 billion this year alone with the with Deadpool, Wolverine, and, and Inside Out 2. That's fine. People wanted to see those. This, I wish they would see more of this than any of the garbage. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Acknowledge me. See the show. I recommend it. See it on Disney+. Plus If you have Disney+, Plus, it's worth your time. This is not a trick. It's good, wholesome family entertainment. That's all I ask for. To be entertained, not preached to. Thanks a lot. See you in the next one.